Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Jack Lee. I'm a PGA professional that works at Kingswood Golf Centre in Doncaster. In tonight's video, we are down here at Thornhurst Park Golf Course and it's a very exciting one for me this evening because although I've had this club for a couple of weeks now, this is the first time that I'll be showing you guys what it is. I have got a new driver. And this is it, right here. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alright then, welcome back. So in tonight's video I have got my brand new TaylorMade, I say brand new, it's brand new to me, TaylorMade M5 driver and we're trying it out for the first time on camera, for the first time on course on camera. I'm going to talk you through why I went for the M5 and not the TaylorMade Sim. I'm going to talk you what setup it is, why I've gone for it, how it's going to benefit my golf, all that kind of cool stuff. But the first thing that I need to do is it my first ever shot with this on camera, don't I? Yeah. Do you know, I've been really looking forward to this one for quite a while now. Apologies if it is a little bit windy this evening. But yeah, like I said, Thornhurst Park. This is the third hole. This is the par five. Let's see how it goes. A little bit down the left side. Super strike though. Not a bad one to start there. It could have gone worse. Could always have gone worse. And then, so let's get into the nitty gritty. TaylorMade M5, why? As you may or may not know, I have had a Ping G400 LS Tech for a good couple of years now and it just kind of got to the point where, well, to be quite honest with you, I was a little bit bored of it. Since being fitted for that driver, I feel as though my tendencies have changed. Consistency has definitely changed, um, mainly due in part to the fact that I'm playing nowhere near as much golf as what I'd like to at the moment and when I do, I've been absolutely terrible. So it really did just get to the point where I, I really did fancy a change. Now, second question, why TaylorMade M5? and not the Sim, or the Sim Max. A bit left again, not like me. So the main reason really was that I've never had a driver that had such adjustability as what the M5 does. As you can see on the picture that I'll pull up for you now, you can see that it has this T-Track system. On the Sim, the newest offering from TaylorMade, it just has uh, a track system which is very much like the old SLDR where it's just one straight across. The Sim itself is quite a low spinning driver and with how inconsistent I've been with me driving recently, it may get to a point when I look for more forgiveness, which, is, which in the M5's case, I will be able to put that weight further back and make this driver effectively more forgiving. In the Sim Max, you haven't got the draw fade bias adjustability at all. And that's something that, as you will see, with the way that I've got the M5 set up, it's something that I'm finding that I'm needing at the moment because the bad shot for me and the bad shot typically for me off the tee is one that kind of curves too much to the left. So as you'll see when it comes to looking at the driver setup of how I've got the M5 at the minute, you'll see why that draw and fade bias is so important. So I feel like if they made a hybrid of the TaylorMade Sim and Sim Max, that's probably what I would have gone for. However, they don't. So that's why I've gone M5. Nothing to do with newness, nothing to do with Sim not being as good as M5. It just really is a case of the M5 gives me everything that I want, whereas Sim and Sim Max don't. Poop. It's a par. Right now, let's talk setup. So as you can see in these weight ports here, currently I have this weight right here, kind of towards the middle of this rail. And I have this one right up in the toe, back toe region of the golf club. Reason being for this, I am notoriously a high spinner. I'll try and block that sun out of my head. I'm notoriously a high spinner of the golf ball. That's why I need this weight slightly further forward than normal. Also, like I said earlier, the bad one for me is one where the toe closes at an excessive rate which sees the golf ball go left. That's why by putting this weight further in the heel it should hopefully slow that toe down and ensure that this face is a little bit square coming into impact. Loft wise, this is a nine degree driver. I have got it on standard. Shaft wise, we've got a Mitsubishi Tensai Orange. Now this is a stiff flex shaft. However, it has been tipped using my very limited golf shaft knowledge. This is now somewhere in between a stiff and an extra stiff. Grip wise, got my favorites, Decade Multi Compound. And I've not gone from the traditional um, black and white. I've gone black and black this time. 
So yeah, weight's making a difference when it comes to straightness. Loft is nine degrees as it usually is. Shaft is a little bit different to what I've had before. With regards to the shafts, I did try out a few. So I tried out the torsion. I think it's an Aldilla shaft, that one. I tried out the Hazardous 6.0, which I have tried out before. Didn't really like, didn't really like it again this time. And I tried out this Mitsubishi Tensai. This saw most stable ball flights. It saw, they were all much of a muchness when it came to the distance. There were only a couple of yards between all of them. But yeah, I do feel like I have got a nice combination here of shaft, head weights helping me. Like I said earlier, we weren't able to get this in sim. This uh, big TY track system, whatever they want to call it. I'm liking it. Let's hit another drive. A bit further down the right hand side that time. Pretty nice strike again though. A couple of other external factors which came into me thinking when buying this driver, right? So, so a bit of a weird one this, right? I was playing with a good friend of mine, Josh Bell. Josh Bell has the TaylorMade M5. We were on the 15th hole at Ickleton and I just kind of said to him jokingly, I said, Belly, I'm getting a bit sick of my G400. Do you mind if I just have a go with this M5, see what it's like? I've never been more impressed First impressions wise, on a golf club, I think, in my entire life. The speed at which it felt as though the ball came off the face of this driver, the sound it made was a lot different to what I'm used to because I'm not used to a carbon composite crown. All the ones I've used previously have been pinging them more on the titanium side. And it made this crazy powerful, like, dull thud as soon as it hit the face. And it felt like nothing I tried before, really. And that, from that moment, it kind of planted the seed as to making me want this driver more and more, so. Instead of just seeing what I could get for a reasonable price on your marketplaces, buying it brand new off the shelf from somewhere, I did the sensible thing of going down the route and making sure that I found the right head, shaft option, loft in a fitting that I, I will admit I am very thankful to do, considering the position that I'm in. But once I kind of got a bit of a taste for what this driver were like, I then spec'd it out for myself. And, and I think, currently, considering now I'm playing quite poorly, uh, driver's been one of the best parts of my game. And I think that's due to the good work that I've done fine-tuning it, so things looking up. Now looks-wise, again, this is going to sound a little bit pathetic, but one reason why I did favour this again over the tailor-made Sim and Sim Max was it's black and red, it's Man United colours. How, how very fickle of me, eh? 197 I've got here. Let's see if I can uh, mess this one up. And I have. Right on cue. This what you're seeing right now is very much a fair reflection of my golf at the minute. And it's doing my tits in. I've just hit a good shot. I've just held a bunker shot. Get in there. It's about bloody time and all that a nice shot. Well, ladies and gents, that's probably the most rattish birdie I think you'll ever see in your life. Anyways, all excitement aside, I am looking forward to seeing what this driver is going to do for me moving forward because like I said to you earlier in the video, my tendencies are always changing and I'm in a horrible spot with my golf at the minute so I think as I slowly get back into it, if I do get a chance to get back into it and I make a couple of swing changes to find a bit more consistency, my favourite thing about having an adjustable driver finally in my life is that my changes can be made alongside changing the driver whereas with the ping it was this is what you get and you're stuck with it right so it's a little bit more into the wind this time i'm going to try a like a lowy fader type one on this tee shot let's give it a go oh yeah finally a nice one hello who's this guy do you know how to play golf well that were a strangely good drive from me let's see how i can mess this up now so i've got 104 i'm going to put a little punchy 50 degree in there Has it got the distance? No, it has not. It's my short right. Nice. Told you I'd mess it up. Oh, golf. Doesn't it just do you, Eddie? Yeah, nicely. Right, so there you go. That was my first time on course with my new driver, the TaylorMade M5. If you guys have liked this video, please make sure you're doing the usuals, liking, sharing, subscribing. Also, make sure you turn your bell on because I know that over 60% of you guys have not got that bell notification button turned on. That basically just means that whenever I post a video, you guys will be the first to see it and you don't want to be missing it now, do you? So there you go. Hopefully, I'll be seeing a lot more of this. You guys will be seeing a lot more of this. And hopefully, it might just spark some life back into my dead aft golf game at the minute so 
that's pretty much it from me today stay tuned another video coming in a couple of days thanks for watching laters